All right, we're talking about Coulomb's Law, the answer to everything. Coulomb's Law describes the force of attraction between charged particles. Um, Coulomb's Law tells us that opposite charges attract and like charges repel. That's a fancy word that means that they push apart. Distance is the most important factor to consider. The closer an electron is to a proton, the more uh, attraction you're going to see, the higher the attraction will be. So if you consider this picture below, which electron is more attracted to its proton, the top one or the bottom one, uh, we know that the closer the electron is, the higher the attraction is going to be. So the closer electron is the one that is going to be more attracted. Uh, and that would be the bottom picture. You can see in the top picture, the proton and the electron are very far apart. That is not going to be as much attraction as in the bottom picture where the proton and the electron are close together. Type of charge is another factor. Protons are positive and electrons are negative. So when we think, do protons and electrons attract or repel each other, um, we think about this point of Coulomb's law that says opposite charges attract and like charges repel. If we know protons are positive and electrons are negative, that tells us that they attract each other because they have opposite charges and opposite charges attract. That's part of Coulomb's law. So then we have to think about, will one of <clears throat> excuse me, will one electron have more attraction for one proton or will it have more attraction for two protons? And it turns out that the more attraction there, or the more charge there is, the more attraction there can be. So one electron and one proton will be attracted, but the electron will be more attracted when there are more protons. So in this bottom picture that has two protons to one electron, the attraction is greater for two protons to one electron, as opposed to one electron being attracted to only one proton. In summary, electrons experience a larger force of attraction when they are closer to protons. This is the most important factor when you're comparing atoms of two different elements. If the electrons are closer, they will be more attracted. And electrons experience a larger force of attraction to a larger number of protons. This is only going to be important if the distance is the same for both elements being compared. So if there's a difference in the distance, then the closer one will be more attracted. If the electrons are the same distance, from the protons, then you have to take into account how many protons are there. So we have a few diagrams we can look at here. Labeled diagram A is one proton and one electron uh, that are about an inch apart. Labeled diagram B, two protons about an inch apart from one electron. In diagram C, there is one proton and it's about three inches away from the electron. And in diagram D, there are two electrons that are about an inch away from each other. We have to compare the force of attraction between A and B, the force of attraction between A and C, and the force of attraction between A and D. Uh, one proton and one electron versus two protons and one electron, when they are the same distance apart, B will have more attraction than A, because they are the same distance apart, but B has more charge. Then when we compare A versus C, there is one proton in A and one proton in C. The electron is much closer in A, so A is going to have more attraction than C is, because the electron in C is further away, and distance is more important. Uh, then when we compare the force of attraction between A and D, a has one proton and one electron. D is an electron and another electron. We know that A will be much more attracted than D because D is repelling. Electrons repel each other. So D is not attracted at all. This brings us to the basic idea of periodic trends. And we're going to do periodic trends in two parts. So I'm going to do the first big idea stuff in this video, and then we're going to get into specifics in the next video. Um, the big idea of periodic trends is that patterns of properties emerge 
from the arrangement of electrons on the periodic table. And that gives the periodic table predictive power. You can actually predict how attracted the electrons of an element are going to be to that element's nucleus um, based on where it is on the periodic table. So the more protons there are, that's going to result in a larger attraction of protons. The number of protons increases as you go across a period. So when you're looking at elements that are in the same period as each other, remember that um, a period is the horizontal rows on a periodic table and that a group is the vertical columns on a periodic table. Remember, keep that in mind. As you're looking at elements that are in the same period as each other, all of those atoms are gonna be the same, um, the electrons are gonna be the same distance from the nucleus. So the only thing that will affect the charge according to Coulomb's law, if they're the same distance, then what affects the attraction is how much charge there is. So how many protons there are. You can check as you're comparing two elements in the same period, so like beryllium and boron are in the same period, you check the protons as you move from left to right on the periodic table. When there are more protons, that's gonna be a stronger attraction because there's more charge. Um, and this, again, you compare this when the elements are in the same period because when they're in the same period, they are the same distance from the nucleus. So anything further right, has more protons and more attraction, and anything further left has fewer protons and less attraction on the periodic table. Um, when you're looking vertically in groups, more energy levels will result in a greater distance of electrons, which gives you a smaller attraction. When there's more distance, they're less attracted. The number of energy levels increases as you go down the periodic table. So if you actually look on your periodic table right here, uh, it's not labeled on this one on this page, but if you look at the actual periodic table for my course in Schoology, um, the rows, the periods are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And those numbers actually tell you the number of energy levels, the number of rings outside of the nucleus that contain electrons in that atom. So row one or period one has the nucleus with one energy level, one ring around it. Period two has the nucleus with two rings around it. Period three, the nucleus with three rings around it. And then as you go down the periodic table, by the time you get to period seven, we're talking about a nucleus with seven energy levels that are one, two, three, four, five, six, and one more. Seven energy levels around it. You can see the atoms are getting way, way bigger at that point. And at that point, you can also see that these electrons on the valence shell are very far from the nucleus, which means they're not going to feel a whole lot of attraction there. Um, when there are fewer energy levels, that means there's less distance and more attraction. So at the top of the at the top of the periodic table we can see that there are fewer energy levels, less distance and more attraction. Compare that to the bottom where there are more energy levels, that means there's more distance and that's less attraction. So you're gonna compare the distance when you're looking at elements that are in the same group. So for instance, looking at like nitrogen versus SB antimony, those elements are in the same group and they have electrons that are wildly different distances from the nucleus. Nitrogen is in the second period. So nitrogen has uh, electrons that are only two shells from the nucleus. Antimony over here is in the fifth period. And so its electrons are five shells from the nucleus. They are much further away and they are less attracted. The same basic idea, I can give you an analogy if you prefer. Um, and here's the way I always talk about it um, every year with my students. Let's say that you know somebody that you are very attracted to and they go to our school. Um, if you are walking outside and you just came out of the 100 building and all the way down at the 1200 building or the 1100 exit, somebody comes out along that huge long sidewalk. When they're that far away, you don't even know who they are. 
So you're not feeling a whole lot of attraction, but as you get closer to each other, you start to realize it's, the, it's your crush and you start to feel the attraction much more. You're like palms get sweaty and you start to get nervous and you're like, oh my gosh, does my hair look okay? Is there anything in my teeth? You try to like take out your phone and like check the camera really quick to make sure that you look presentable just so that when you pass by your crush, you can give them a like, what's up and not look like an idiot right? The, the further away you are, the less attracted you feel because when they're that far away, you're not even sure if it's your crush or not. But the closer and closer you get to each other, the more you feel that attraction to your crush. Um, the example I always use for me personally is if it were Chris Hemsworth, the actor who plays Thor. Um, like if he were all the way down at one end, uh, like he's coming out of the 1100, I'm coming out of the 100, like at a distance, I don't even know that it's the most beautiful man on the planet. But the closer we get, the more I realize, oh, crap, that is Chris Hemsworth. And then when we get like close enough, I probably would just like faint, um, just like fall over dead because uh, I wouldn't be able to believe it. Um, it's okay, my husband knows I'm, I have a crush on Chris Hemsworth, we're fine. Um, but yeah, like that level of attraction is way more when you get close to each other. Um, distance is what matters the most. And then after you worry about distance, um, if everything's all the same and you're the same distance away, the attraction is going to be more important for something that has more charge. So like if I'm equal distance from Chris Hemsworth, but also like, I mean, do you know who Gary Busey is? You're probably too young. Google Gary Busey. I'll spell his name for you. Let's say I'm equal distance from uh, Gary Busey and uh, and Chris Hemsworth. Like when we're equal distance, I can tell which one I'm more attracted to. And it's going to be the one who's like hotter to me. And for an electron, the one that's hotter to the electron is the one with more protons. So Gary Busey, in my opinion, has very few protons. But um, Chris Hemsworth has like every proton I could possibly ask for. Um, so that's just a little analogy from me to you to try and help you visualize what I'm talking about here with Coulomb's law. Okay, I'm gonna actually skip part of the notes that are in your PDF or if you're looking at the printed book, um, several pages in your printed book uh, because uh, I'm going to do those in the next video. So we're going to go down to this page that says practice. Um, and it's got two periodic tables side by side. I'm going to do part of this page with you right now. And then I will finish the page with you in the next video. Here's how this is going to work. You're going to be given an ultimate question, but you have to think your way through the answer. For each ultimate question, you have to answer parts A through E to figure out which element is the answer. And you're going to have to check where each element in the question is on the periodic table. Now, if you look, first of all, <laughs> on this page, the questions are lettered wrong. Um, it goes A, B, D, E, F. So we're going to fix that first, A, B should be CTE because that's how the alphabet goes. Even my three-year-old could have corrected me on that, but here we are. Um, so fix the lettering. It should say one A, B, C, D, E, not one A, B, D, E, F. My bad. Um, so fix that. And then today in this video, I'm going to do A, B, and C. And in the next video, uh, I will do D and E with you after I have gone back and done the pages I just skipped. So uh, the ultimate question for this problem, which element has the larger pull on shared electrons, fluorine or nitrogen? But before we can actually answer that question, we have to think our way through it. Um, which element has more attraction? Before we can answer this, we need to find fluorine and nitrogen on the periodic table. So I'm gonna look at fluorine and nitrogen, they are in the same period, which means they are the same distance from the nucleus. Their valence electrons are both two shells away from the nucleus. That means they are both the same distance from the nucleus. So to answer which element has a larger pull on shared electrons um, and which element has more attraction, Distance is not going to matter because they're both two energy levels away. That means all that matters is the attraction based on protons. So which one has more attraction? If we look at these 
um, labeled arrows, we can see that there's an arrow pointing to the right saying that the one on the right has more charge. And if we look at the other periodic table, we can see that the one on elements on the right have more attraction. So what has more attraction? What's further right? Fluorine. Okay. Then it asks, why does that element have more attraction than the other one? Is it because there are more protons or fewer protons, or is it because there are more energy levels or fewer energy levels? We've already determined that since these are in the same period, what matters is not the energy levels because um, they both have two energy levels. So neither one has more or fewer than the other. Energy levels don't come into play here. They both are valence electrons to energy levels away from the nucleus. So it's going to have to come down to the protons. So then you ask yourself, does fluorine have more protons than nitrogen or does fluorine have fewer protons than nitrogen? And to answer this, you can check a periodic table. It will tell you when you look at the atomic number that fluorine has nine protons and nitrogen has five, seven. I don't know why I said five, seven. Nitrogen has seven. So um, I know that nitrogen has seven protons and fluorine has nine protons. So does fluorine have more protons or fewer? For, um, fluorine has more protons. Then when you consider your answer to part B, we ask why is this level of attraction observed? So are we seeing that fluorine has more protons, does that mean that there's more charge or that there's less charge? Or does that mean that there's more distance or that there's less distance? Um, again, we know that if they are both two energy levels away, a valence electrons are two energy levels away from the nucleus, that means distance is not coming into play here. So this is about charge. And if fluorine has more protons, that also means it has more charge. So that's how you're going to answer um, questions A, B, and C on your way to answering the ultimate question. And to find how to answer D and E and eventually answer the ultimate question, you're going to have to watch the next video.